Hello, welcome to Introduction to Philosophy at El Camino College in the spring of 2021. My name is Luca Struble. I'm the instructor for this course, and I'm really looking forward to doing some philosophy with you this semester. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the questions we'll be investigating this semester and talk to you also about the overall structure of the course. So let's get going with that. One of the first things we're going to do uh, this coming week is introduce ourselves. We have an introductions discussion board, and uh, I'm going to go through and introduce myself the way that you'll be introducing yourselves on that board. So again, my name is Luca Struble. You can tell us your, the pronouns that you use if you like. It's not always obvious what gender someone is, and so it can be helpful uh, to know what pronouns people use. Uh, my are he, him. My college experience, uh, I got my PhD at UCLA some time ago, and I've been teaching in the Los Angeles area ever since. Why are you taking this course? Well, I'm not taking this course, but I'm teaching it because I really I love doing philosophy. I think it's a really valuable and enjoyable thing to do, and I'll talk a little bit more in this video a little bit later about why I think that is. And then either uh, you can say something that's proud, you're proud of or something that's unusual about you or something maybe both. For me, something that might be both is that I did uh, was able to spend some time on a silent meditation retreat this winter. Uh, even with social distancing, we've been able to do them online. And uh, I really enjoyed that, and it can be challenging, so I'm proud of it. And it's unusual to not talk for several days. For, and you can do both. You could uh, talk, answer this question. Would you like to be famous? And if you were going to be famous, what would it be for? So I don't think I'd particularly like to be famous, but if I was going to be famous, I don't know the variety of things that I think I could do that would be worthwhile that uh, would make me famous, but sort of for myself, um, ever since I, well, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, and uh, that hasn't happened. But um, if I was going to be famous, what would it be for? I think I would like to be famous for one of the first people to go to Mars. That, that uh, yeah, I think that I'd like to be famous for that. Because I would like to go to Mars. Kind of amazing. We can go to Mars eventually. Wow. But not, not in this class. So, um, what questions will we be talking about in this class? Well, we'll start off by asking, does God exist? And we'll be uh, looking at some arguments for uh, the existence of God and some arguments against the existence of God. And this is God as understood in probably the mainstream of Judaism and Christianity and Islam and Maybe Hinduism, a certain shared understanding that while those religions have a whole bunch of differences, they may have a common understanding in some ways of God, and we'll be asking, does that being exist? And considering arguments for and against uh, that being in existence. We'll then turn to, and that's a question in what's called metaphysics. Uh, we'll be learning those terms later on. You don't need to know that. As you can see, it's not on the slide. But questions of ethics and political philosophy. So we can ask, what should I do? How should I in particular behave? And we'll look at some different general answers to that question and consider uh, abortion, uh, the ethics of abortion. And then we'll ask more broadly what makes a society just. And in now is a good time to mention, um, of course, racial justice is very much uh, at the forefront of the conversation right now. And El Camino right now, it's uh, in fact... Black History Month. There are a couple of events that might be of interest to you. Uh, Dr. Hannah, I'm not actually sure how her name is pronounced, but Hannah Obasi, I would guess, is giving a keynote on February 25th, and she's going to be talking about her experience as a physician and uh, what it's been like working in the middle of a global pandemic and racial uh, justice issues that are implicated in that. And there's also um, a... Uh, the library has a visual experience, which it's a bunch of videos basically on a lot of different topics having to do with blackness and black history. And you might find those uh, interesting. I poked around and there's some pretty interesting videos in there. So for us, uh, we'll be addressing not during February, but in, in the course, uh, issues around race and racial justice really in two ways. One is that a lot of uh, thinkers in the history of uh, Western thought, um, along with a variety of other things they did, also happens to be racist. Not happened to be racist, were racist. And we're going to ask, well, how should we think about the fact that they had these um, bad and wrong racist views? What does that 
how does that bear on their other views that may that don't immediately look like uh, they're caught up in their racism? And we'll think about maybe they are, maybe they aren't, those other views. And then uh, later on, we'll also think about what would make a society racially just. How should we think about racial justice in a society? And then after those ethical sort of questions about values, we'll come back to questions about what exists and what kinds of things exist. We'll ask, what kind of thing am I? What kind of thing are you? And what's the relationship between my body and my mind? And then we'll finish with questions in what's called epistemology, which is about what can I know and how do I know it? So those will be the general sorts of questions that we will be addressing in this course. What method will we be using? Well, what we know about will be appealing to the knowledge we have just maybe in virtue of being human and uh, really relying on our ability to reason and talk about, discuss, debate uh, these issues. We won't be using science, we won't be doing experiments, This is, and we also won't be uh, doing art, uh, trying to express ourselves in the way that you express yourself in art, and it's not a religion class. We're not going to be relying on uh, faith or divine revelation. Although, as I said, we will be, we'll be talking about the existence of God, but in a different way, which you'll see. Why might you study philosophy? Well, it will help you develop independent critical thinking skills. It will help you develop your communication skills, your ability to discuss uh, complex and challenging arguments with, uh, and topics with other people and just, and just communicate about them, understand and express. You may have a lot of philosophical curiosity. Uh, it may help you develop a sort of worldview, which is a coherent set of answers to those questions we've been talking about. And because, at least in my view and a lot of other people's view, it's fun. So those are reasons why we might study philosophy. I want to just briefly mention some important course values. One is we're trying to get to truth and trying to be curious about it. These, truth is a good thing. It's good to know, uh, to believe true things and, and to avoid believing false things, particularly about important topics. Uh, we'd like to get it, but in many situations we don't have it yet, and some situations it's very difficult to get. And so curiosity is really about pursuing that truth. And so we want to, we're, yeah, we're trying to get to the truth about these difficult topics. And um, hopefully, maybe even if we don't get all the way there, we'll make some progress and see what different views look like. And, and so we'll see what that's like. It's really important that we respect, uh, well, we need to respect ourselves that we respect our classmates, for the authors that we're reading, and uh, hopefully for me. Um, and of course, so a big part of that is not being racist, sexist, homophobic, other sorts of prejudice um, is not going to be okay. And then uh, spirit of generosity. And uh, these the issues we'll be discussing are, people have a, a lot of different views about them, and uh, we want to try to put ourselves in other people's shoes to understand their views. Not that we want to necessarily agree with them or even think that, oh, well, my view is fine and your view is fine and they're both true and no problem, but just a sense of let me see how this other person or this other author is thinking about this issue and maybe they have some, I have something to learn from them. Or maybe not. So, of course, structure-wise, we'll have two modules a week. Uh, and so a module will be released by Saturday at uh, 12 a.m., so midnight between fr uh, Saturday and Sunday, and then, um, sorry, midnight between Friday and Saturday, and then that will be due on, the work for that will be due Tuesday, and then uh, immediately after that, so between, you know, Tuesday day and Wednesday day, um, that midnight, the next module will be up, and its work will be due on Friday. So you'll have work due at the end of the day on Tuesday and due at the end of the day on Friday. And in general, the modules will be released really substantially in advance of that, but that's how the course is going to be structured. So we kind of have two lectures a week, except that we're not actually having any online required meetings. So what will we be doing? So you'll be doing reading. Uh, you'll be watching videos, uh, probably in general shorter than this, but videos. You'll have quizzes and sh other short assignments on Canvas, we'll be including online discussions. You're going to have two papers. We'll talk more about those as they come up. Well, four papers, uh, two quite short and two a little bit longer, and then there'll be an exam at the end of the semester. Courses online, obviously. That means there are no on-campus meetings, and this is a purely asynchronous class, which means there are no scheduled meetings. So you can do the work whenever you want. 
and watch the videos whenever you want, um, just as long as you're getting it done by the deadlines. To contact me, there are a couple of different things you can do. First, um, we can have, uh, I don't have scheduled office hours, but I'm available for appointments. And the, there's a Calendly app. There's just a link on the website. Actually, let's pop over and take a look at that now. Uh, we want to be in Chrome. So, yeah, this is what the Canvas page looks like. And this first module is just a link. You click on this. Um, that will open Calendly. And this is just an application that will let you, you know, you click on a day, and it will show you times when I'm available and when you um, would be available for an office hour. And so you can just make an appointment to see me. And the you can email me. And the best way to contact me, and you can email me at any time, 24-7. Uh, I won't so respond right away. Um, and I have my notification set, so I won't be woken up. But you can email me 24-7. The best way to do it is actually using the Canvas inbox here. And then finally, in Canvas, there's a, an IM an instant messaging program called Pronto. It always takes a little while to load, and it doesn't show in that student view, but it's this thing. It comes down at the very bottom of this list, and it doesn't load right away, but then it loads, and it's this. It will pop up in um, an IM window here eventually, and you can uh, instant message me. And I will, um, for emails, I will respond by the end of the next calendar day, guaranteed, typically faster than that, and Pronto I tend to respond to quickly as well. So Zoom, email me anytime, and pronto are the ways you can get in touch with me. Online is nice because it's flexible, but as you know, it can also be easy perhaps uh, to lose touch with the course. And uh, so you want to take steps to avoid doing that, and we'll be talking a little bit about ways that you can avoid doing that uh, in the first couple of modules. I really recommend downloading the Canvas app. I'll talk a little bit about that, about that in a different video. But it's extremely, you can get it on your tablet or your phone and whatever you have, whatever you prefer. It makes it very easy to see what you need to do. And you can just check it like every morning or every evening. Just, oh, what's going on with all my schoolwork? And it's a very uh, easy way to see what your deadlines are. So really, I would recommend highly getting that app. Our textbook is The World of Philosophy by uh, it's a collection of uh, original of works by uh, historical works by philosophers. Uh, Stephen M. Kahn is the guy who collected them all. You can get it in paperback, but you can also get it as an ebook, and you can either purchase or rent the ebook. And renting the ebook is uh, definitely the most economical option, and there are links to it in the first module. There will be other readings as well, uh, and the PDFs for them will be just be posted on Canvas in the modules on Canvas. How will you be evaluated? How you will get your grade? So you're, you will earn points. Um, oh, but in general, the idea is you have to have the right worldview, which is my worldview. Well, maybe my not right one. You don't have to have my worldview, whether or not it's the right one. What you need to do is understand the questions that we're discussing and the different answers that different philosophers have given and why they think those answers are correct. And you need to reason about them well in your papers and on the short assignments. So it's understanding what understanding the material and reasoning about it well. And you can do all of that while not necessarily coming to the same conclusions that I do. In fact, I would expect that many of you will understand the questions, understand the answers, reason about them well, and disagree with me. That's fine. So you'll be doing a bunch of different assignments, and they'll each be getting points. So there's an initial reflection paper. This is short. It's easy. It's due this Wednesday. It's easy. There'll be short assignments uh, worth around a total of 560 points. There'll be about 28 of them, and each of them will be worth about 20. This um, may change a little bit. There'll be two essay papers, each worth 150 points for a total of 300 points. Those will be in the range of four to five pages. There'll be a final reflection paper. This paper is about two pages, and then this paper will be about two pages. And um, there, you'll see when you look at the assignments, they're very straightforward, and they're, they, they are not going to be challenging papers to write. Just an opportunity for you to think out loud on, well, think in words, uh, not out loud, but on your, in your word processor. And then uh, there'll be a final exam uh, due on the last day of the semester, which is uh, Thursday, June 10th. 
And so the total number of points will be around 1,070. That's approximate because the number of points will depend upon exactly how many points come from short assignments. Your letter grade is based on the percentage of points you earn. So if you get 100 through 90% of the points, you'll get an A. For B, you need to get 89 through 75%, so that's a 15% point range. For C, then 74 through 60, another 15% range. Then in D, it's 59 through 50%, and then in F is 49% or less. And uh, I expect us all to succeed. My goal is that we all, that all of you succeed, and I see my job as helping you to do that. And we can all succeed. How do we succeed? Well, you're going to want to do the readings at least twice actively. So making notes, thinking about what you're reading, trying to figure out what the authors are saying. Um, you'll see that the readings are short but challenging, which is why you need to read them more than once. And we'll talk uh, more about how to read philosophy papers as or philosophy writing as the course progresses. Confusion is a good thing if we're curious, because confusion, uh, and, and you're going to expect to be confused at times in this course, and that's fine. Um, when you get confused, you think, aha, that means there's something I don't understand. This is an opportunity for me to learn something. So if we have that curious attitude, then we can use confusion not as a, oh no, something has gone wrong, but a, oh no, now I get to learn uh, moment. You'll want to take notes on the videos. They'll have slides like this one, but you want to take notes on them. You might find it helpful to download the slides and then take notes on them. You want to look those notes over. Ask questions in the discussion board by emailing me or on Pronto or in Zoom uh, appointments. Uh, and those are the, and then you know you want to do all the homework, of course. So that's how you're going to succeed. And so for this Wednesday, we don't actually have any reading uh, in philosophy. But you are going to want to watch the other videos in the module. We're going to be learning a little bit about uh, what we mean by argument in this course. You'll do the assignments. So there's, you'll need to do the introduction post. There's a survey about arguments. That's, you'll get points for doing that, but you don't get points for uh, right or wrong answers. It's a survey. Uh, there are correct answers, but you're not graded on them. You're just graded on having answered them. Take that survey before you watch the video on arguments. You'll, that video will be much more effective if you've taken the survey first. And then after watching the video on arguments, take the arguments quiz and write the reflection paper. The reflection paper, as I said, it's short, it's easy, you'll see the description of it. It just asks you a little bit to introduce yourself a little bit more length and just to sort of, what are your views on some philosophical issues? And you don't have to defend them. I'm just curious about what they are. And so you'll just get to um, say a little bit about what they are. That's, so that's fine. That's not a, uh, it's important, but it's easy to do. If you don't do these, and you also don't contact me by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m., you'll be dropped as a no-show. So uh, I want you in the class, uh, but I also want the class to be a success for you. So if you don't do these, this work, and you also don't contact me then I'll, and let me know what the issue is, then I'll drop you, uh, which I want you to be in the class. I don't want to do that. And if there is a challenge that you're having, please uh, contact me, Pronto, I, uh, um, you know, Pronto or the, email me, and we'll figure out what to do, and we'll work something out, and it will be fine. But if you, um, if you don't do those things, again, it's, it's best for us if um, you get out of the class quickly. As I said, I'm excited about this class. I think it's valuable. You'll succeed if you stay in it, and I want you to stay in it. So please uh, do the work, and I look forward to getting to know you. If you have any questions, please let me know.